Vaughn. I want to talk about some money here for a couple of minutes. We didn't get to this last time around with our next two guests. Let's do it now. I want to welcome back the pairing of columnist, author, and pollster, Matt Towery, joined by syndicated columnist, veteran economist, University of Maryland professor, Peter Morisi. Gentlemen, let's talk money here if a minute, if you can, because the Wall Street Journal today had two articles that I found very fascinating. Peter, to you first. One was talking about how Sanders and Trump threaten market confidence, and another one talked about would Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders supercharge the growth of this country? Obama's economists think not. Let's take that second one first. Trump, Sanders, which one, in your opinion, would be the best one for the American economy? Well, it absolutely would be Trump, and I'm not surprised that administration economists or Democratic economists or even Wall Street economists would say no, because he is outside the establishment, and Wall Street and administration economists are inside of it. So, I mean, there's going to be denial about both Trump and Sanders. There's been articles written about Sanders that are very negative. My feeling is Trump is the better of the two. All right. Now, let me come to you, Matt, on this, because second part of that is the Wall Street Journal second article, How Sanders and Trump Threaten Market Confidence, talks about Bernie Sanders breaking up the banks, introducing universal government-funded health care. But at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is a massive amount of debt. We're talking about more government, more agencies. As a matter of fact, I think I've heard something like, what, $14 trillion? Some ridiculous number that's being talked about here. Isn't it fair to say that every time Bernie Sanders opens his mouth and talks about we're going to be a better nation, people aren't looking at the actual numbers here and seeing what the truth of it is? Well, people have quit looking at the numbers that any politician ever talks about because they don't believe them and they think the deficits will always increase, which they do. With regard to market confidence, one of the things I found, I actually ran a fairly substantial company for many years, um, and in doing so and coming out of politics, I was amazed at my fellow uh, office holders who had a almost non-existent understanding of business, certainly of the markets, uh, of finance. And one thing about Donald Trump that you did, do get is he is an outsider, I agree completely, but you do have someone who at least has been in the business world who has done major deals, and trust me, this is a guy who behind the scenes can, can calm it down and make reasoned decisions. He's not, he's not the wild man from Borneo like everyone thinks uh, when he's behind scenes. But I do think that the markets will feel more comfortable with Trump than they will with Sanders. Sanders, quite frankly, uh, goes way beyond the pale of the George McGovern candidacy in 1972. And, you know, America seemed almost off kilter with that. And you saw what the result was. I think Sanders goes beyond the pale of even Barack Obama's wildest dreams. So I think the markets would not respond well to Sanders. I think Trump would be would be fine after they had a, a shakedown period. By the way, Peter, it took the United States almost 240 years to hit a national debt of 18 trillion. Sanders' proposals over a decade would add 18 trillion dollars so far. That in itself just seems to me to be amazing how people are falling for the dupe that is Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is not a dupe, and I hate to disappoint my conservative friends, but a national health care program is indeed possible. The United States is already spending 50%, about 45% more than Britain does on health care, and about a third more than Germany does on health care. They have different systems, but they both are in line with what Bernie Sanders wants to accomplish. Certainly, Americans would have to pay more taxes if we were not to go into debt to finance health care this way. However, they wouldn't be paying health insurance premiums anymore. The savings would outweigh the taxes if it was implemented properly. That's the big if. The Europeans have credible civil servants. The United States has the gang of bullies over at the IRS. The real problem here is the inability of the government to execute effectively. But I think that reforming national health care along the lines of that what Sander wants is frankly much more credible than what mainstream Republicans are offering and what Hillary Clinton has offered. I got about 30 seconds. Matt, to you for a response. Well, interestingly enough, and I don't think Republicans, uh, some Republicans want to point it out, I think Donald Trump is sort of hitting in a sort of mini version of this as well. He says, right. no one should go without coverage. And I think I think we're hearing that we're going to see a meeting in the middle on health care because this system right now yeah. that we have simply isn't working. And pretty soon we're going to have to hear a lot of these candidates, Donald Trump and or Sanders and or Hillary Clinton, are going to have to start talking about this in relation to the others. Because as we've said, it looks as if Donald Trump has got a really smooth sailing. Heading 
heading towards Super Tuesday next week. Matt Towery, Peter Marisi, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for sticking around because your expertise in these, the economic issues, and so many more is just invaluable. Gentlemen, thanks so much. I'm sure we'll talk to you again real soon. We are awaiting some word from Nevada. Why? Because the last polls and caucus places don't close until midnight Eastern time. They're counting the ballots. Some places say they're counting them twice and three and four times. That's the big story coming out of Nevada tonight. Stay with us. We've got a long way to go and a lot more to talk about when we continue on our coverage of the 2016 Nevada GOP caucus.